It's Chiefs Niners this Sunday in Super Bowl 58, and our own Paul Schwartz is out in Vegas covering it all. But of course, there are some giant storylines we have to cover. So, Paul, let's get to that now. The Giants coaching staff, it's been shuffled up quite a bit. Mike Kafka, not only he's staying with the Giants, but is now an assistant head coach, and they have a new defensive coordinator. So what are your thoughts on all these changes, and are there any that really stand out to you? Well, um, hi, Emma Kate. Um, I remember last year at the Super Bowl, um, you know, uh, this was the day that Brian Dables named um, coach of the year. Uh, there weren't really many staff changes at all. That's what happens when you win, right? Uh, this year, they uh, did not have a winning record, did not make the playoffs, and um, a lot of changes. Yes, yeah, so I got out here to Vegas, and I've been riding Giants almost every day. Uh, the big news was um, Shane Bowen as defensive coordinator, and um you know, I don't think he was the absolute first choice. I think some guys like Denard Wilson and Bobby Babich um, went to take other jobs, which made sense for them because of their connections with the teams that they went to, um, or in Bobby Babich's case, the team that he stayed with, the Buffalo Bills. But Shane Bowen was the most experienced of all the candidates Brian Dable interviewed. He's been a defensive coordinator with the Titans the last three years. So I think in that way, it's a good fit. Uh, the Giants don't have to kind of have a, a position coach elevated to defensive coordinator and kind of learn the ropes there. This guy's been a defensive coordinator uh, much younger. Wink Martindale was 60. Shane Bowen's 37. So there's certainly like an injection of some youth there. And, um, yeah, as you mentioned, um, three Giants assistants. Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, was given the additional title of um, associate head coach or assistant head coach, I guess. And um, um, Jerome Henderson, the defensive backs coach, is now um, – Defensive passing game coordinator, Shea Tierney, the quarterback's coach, is offensive passing game coordinator. And these are, first of all, um, they're bump ups in salary. They're bump ups a little bit in um, job description and certainly some of the duties they will have to do. And it's uh, basically uh, Brian Dable saying, I'm glad you're here. Um, you know, I'll give you some more money. Uh, you're worthwhile. You're valued on the staff. And, um, you know, there was a lot of rumors about Mike Kafka not being happy and leaving. And I didn't buy into many of those rumors at all. And it turns out he's staying with a promotion. So um, it remains to be seen whether he'll call the plays again this year. Uh, maybe Brian Dable will take them back. But um, that decision has not been made yet. Yeah, lots of changes uh, on that end. And, and that promotion for Kafka, who had some interest from other teams, you know, what what does that say about this organization's confidence in him as the team's offensive coordinator? Well, it says something about Brian Dable's confidence in him. Um, um, you know, he was never really a guy that they were thinking of, of replacing. Uh, that was not the way Brian uh, Brian Dable was thinking. You know, he fired Wink Martindale. Um, you know, they had an angry um, Wink Martindale cursed him out and walked out of the room. So that was kind of a self-firing. Uh, uh, Dable fired his special teams coach, Thomas McGahee. So, you know, I don't think he wanted to get rid of all three coordinators. And um, I think Kafka is certainly valued. Yeah. And another person who we've heard a lot about this week, Saquon Barkley, he appeared on First Take earlier and, and he reiterated he wants to be a giant for life. But there's been so many rumblings this week about where he'll play next season, what's going to happen. Has anything actually changed and where do you think he's going to end up? Um, nothing has changed, and you don't always get what you want, right, Emma Kate? You know, we want a lot of things, but you don't always get them. And Saquon wants to be a giant for life. He also wants to be paid uh, commensurate what, what he thinks he's worth, and what he thinks he's worth, and what the Giants thinks think he's worth. Um, I don't believe will be compatible. Compatible. Now, can Saquon Barkley get a better deal elsewhere? That remains to be seen. But Joe Shane um, put a line in the sand last year on a contract that would have guaranteed Saquon about $13 million in 2024. Saquon turned that down. He played, you know, on a basically a franchise tag type one year deal. And I don't think Saquon is going to see 13 million this year in 2024 from the Giants or any team. So I think that was a miscalculation on his part. Now, Thursday night is the NFL honors um, event and Saquon is in line for um, Walter Payton man of the year. And that is a um, it is the most prestigious you know, non-football playing award in the league. It is very highly uh, regarded. It is, um, look, MVP, Super Bowl MVP. These are on-field things. The Walton Payton Man of the Year World uh, Award is for a guy who is a tremendous player and a tremendous citizen in the community with charity and endeavors and things like that. Um, I know that Saquon is very high on the list. Um, I think he's a favorite to win it. And if he does, that will be quite remarkable, a great achievement for Saquon. And, um, 
you know, does it put a little pressure on the Giants to be like, well, this guy is such a great citizen. Can you find a place in your salary cap to have him come and return to play for your team? 